Well, now we have another build along that we want to announce. And this one I'm really excited about because I know absolutely nothing about this. Uh, lighting is something that, that I have, uh, you know, I, I use the old ways, you know, it's just uh, plug a light bug in. If it comes through the windows, then I've lit the building kind of thing. That, that's, that's my sophistication at this point with lighting. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, Michael Groves is the owner of uh, Darwin Lighting uh, Without Wires. And uh, I think that we're all going to learn a great deal about uh, the build along that he's going to be doing on the show uh, and about his company. So, Michael, thanks so much. I know that you must be tired just getting back from Washington, but uh, thanks so much for being here this evening. You're most welcome, Jim. Thanks so much for inviting me on. Um, I've got a presentation which I'll run through fairly quickly, which will give you a whole load of information. I do recognize a couple of names up here, so that's that's great, especially Earl Hackett. Um, good to see you. So, um, Jim, how would you, would you like me just to proceed with the, just get straight into this presentation and the way we go? Yes, sir. And uh, it's, the floor is yours, sir. We'd like to hear about your company and and about the products, because like I say, you know, I'm, I, I know one way of doing it, and that's straight DC and plug in a light bulb on the inside of the model and hope it shines through the windows. <laughs> okay. So um, what I need to do is I'm going to do a screen share, and hopefully I'm going to get this right, um, where I'm going to actually play this. Um, so... Okay, and I'm actually in the wrong slide, so that, that's great. I, I've got myself way down into the middle. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay, then we're on. Boy, I can't believe it. First time up. Okay, so <laughs> I'm Dr. Michael Groves. I've got this strange accent because I come from both England and then down under. Um, that's where I did all my studies, though, is my science studies and physics. Um, but I want to give you a little bit of background as to how on earth did I get into this situation of running a company with my grandchildren. So here we go. So, oh, there's my wife uh, at one of our shows with our Dwarven lighting system. But um, brief history for me was at age 11, I started doing a lot of model railroading. Um, my father bought me different components and I'm a grandfather in England. And then at age 13, I stopped. I moved to Australia. And at that time, I found there were other things of great interest to young boys. And um, But at age 31, after I'd been married and my son was seven years old, my wife gave him a train set and said, here, Michael, it's time for you to start working on your layout. So at age 55, though, I sawed that into pieces. And you're going to see what I did with it. So there it is out on my driveway with the sawzall there. Uh, I couldn't find a machete to chop it up, so there it is. Um, not a good way to chop up your layout, and it does it plays devil with your wiring, by the way, um, and that became part of the problem. So, and that's my son there, working who'd been working on the layout and helped me dismantle it. He'd done all of the um, layout of the uh, yeah, all the trestle work um, and all that sort of stuff. He's he's a very particular. He's an engineer, by the way. So, um, so. What I learned, though, from that exercise was that joining sections is a pain, and you already know most of that. And the other thing I learned that was rewiring was an absolute headache. So what happened was I'd had my layout in my basement for two years. All the labels fell off my wires, and I decided, what am I going to do? So that's when I started rethinking everything. So I'd got a grain of wheat bulbs in. In fact, that's a cold tipple that my son made. Um, it's using grain of wheat bulb. I really, if I ever turn it on, you know why, of course, because if you turn it on and it goes out, well, what am I going to do? I'm never going to repair that thing. So I sort of, you know, just leave it there. But grain of wheat bulbs, as you're very familiar with, it's very small, very bright, very nice, difficult, horribly difficult to solder, those tiny wires, lots of wiring associated with them, and just almost impossible to replace. So you then get to LEDs. So I'm looking at LEDs. And I'm going, okay, maybe this is what I should do. But you've learned that LEDs have a cathode and an anode. So instead of just being a wire map, you've got to determine which wire you're going to use on which side. In other words, the positive has to be on the anode side, negative on the cathode side. And you've got to add resistors, otherwise you blow the whole thing up. So I go to 
Evan Designs, and you see his lights, brilliant, lots of those. And I thought, maybe this is a way to go. And then I saw this picture and I went, uh, no, 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 we're not doing that. Because if I put 100 lights in a small area, which is what I've done in a, on my layout right behind me, I'm going to end up with huge mass of wires. So I decided that was not going to be where I'm going to go. In fact, what you really want to always be careful of is this wiring spaghetti syndrome. It occurs to all of us in model rail running. Um, so just don't let that happen to you. Um, in fact, somebody, uh, Rick Wilson, Wilkins, I was up at their Big E meeting in 2019. He said, look, look at this nice picture of my, um, my display board here, my control board. But he said, now take a look at the back side of it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's quite a job, isn't it? So, um, so I then looked at the Just Plug system and I said, okay, now there's a beautiful way to do it because it removes all of the issues of the wiring. I don't have to solder wires. It has all the resistors put into those. Very, very nice system. But what I thought was, well, you know, that's incredibly complex from the point of view, of, I just got to buy lots of components. So instead of just having now lights and wires and soldering iron, I got all these components I'm going to use. And I've just decided, okay, well, there you go. Those are all the components that you need to put on. In fact, I called Woodland Cine and said, what would it do take to light up my system? And um, they gave me a whole big litany of, of items that I needed to buy. And I thought, oh, well, that's not quite the way I really want to go. So in LEDs, inexpensive and long lasting, polarity and voltage is critical. The spaghetti wiring is a big challenge, but the just plug system is a solution. So why didn't I go with it? Well, number one, I found it a bit too expensive. Still lots of wires. The wires break easily. In fact, I didn't really know that at the time, but now I've got a lot of customers that tell me that the wires break very easily. And honestly, they've told me it also limits creativity because you just got to use the system as it is, and it just limits. So what I did was I said to myself, how about fiber optics? Why don't we give that a go, right? No wiring, easy to install, but how are you going to power them? So I had people come to me and they said, no, you can't do that. It won't work. <laughs> Hold a minute. I'm a physicist. When you say that to a physicist, you're sunk, right? We'll put you on the moon if you want. So I decided I'm going to have it. I'm going to give it a go. So what I decided was I really wanted sort of a realism. I wanted reliability on a system. I wanted ease of installation, a cost-effective approach, and provides for integration, imagination. Now, mind you, this is just for me. I'm not commercializing anything. So this is back in around 19... Uh, no, 2007 to 2008 is when I started on this. So here's my little gizmo that I put together. So what you see there, I'll see if I can, I can't point to it. So I, maybe you, can you see my pointer there? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So there's a whole bunch of fibers. I stuck them into a heat shrink piece of tubing. I grabbed a light, an LED from a car headlight. I stuck in a circuit for it to be able to drive it at, at such horrendous, like one amp. I then put a huge big heat sink on the back of it. And then I put a dirty great big fan on the back of it to get the heat out of that LED. And it worked. And I had that for almost 10 years and, and just, you know, just lit up some of my buildings and so on. But then the next thing that happened was uh, my grandson, I was now age 65, so I'm moving on in life. He's age 13, but he started working on stuff. And I realized he's going to be an engineer and that needs money. So I decided, all right, how about we try to commercialize this? So that's what we did. So we came up with our first product, which is the Dwarven Lamplighter one. And all it is, is just it's just a glorified box with a really high powered LED in it, with optics in it as well, and electronics, and a dirty great big heat sink allowed me to now take what I'd done on my layout to actually commercialize it. Sort of product, I came from the medical business. So what you can do is you can throw this on the floor and nothing's going to happen because medical business, we have to do that sort of thing. So, okay. So the idea is you just take the lamp lighter, mount it underneath your layout, and you can run a fiber up into a building or you can take a fiber attached to a lamp and run it down into that lamp lighter box. So all in all, I say to people, should take about 30 seconds to light a building or to insert a street lamp. 
So let's see if this will actually work. So we'll take a fiber, we'll just insert this into the lamp lighter. And yes, we've got light at the end of the fiber. But let's say I need to shorten it. All I need to do is I can just snip off the end of the fiber. No treatment necessary. I would drill a hole then underneath my layout. That's step number two. Step number three is inserted into the building. Okay, so that's a sort of simple idea. Here's part of my layout, which is actually right behind me. And you probably noticed that I'm gonna use, I've got the occasional Rolls Royce um, around the place. That was one of the cars I wanted when I was young, but um, I've grown a bit too old to, to bother about those things anymore. Um, but one of the things that I discovered was that using fiber optic lighting provides you with pools of light. LED fibers actually provide you with a wash of light, which is useful in some situations, but fibers actually find you, provide you with a pool of light. And I had a stage lighting director come up to me and he said, you know, that's much more prototypical because objects then move in and out of these pools of light and it's much more dynamic. And that's what the way he would set up his stage lighting. So I was kind of surprised with that. So that's part of what you're seeing there. So if you see these pools of light, you'll see there's nice dark areas in between. And that's a really big, a nice characteristic of um, using fiber optic lighting. Now, I know most of what we're buildings, but I just wanted to sort of give you a bit of a full orbed picture of what goes on. So oh, there we go with an E-type Jag. Um, that, now, I would like one of those now. So if anybody wants to provide some at a discount, I'm, I'm very happy. Maybe I'll sell the company to you for, one, for an E-type Jag. How's that? Um, so, yeah. But anyway, there I have it sort of sitting under these lights, uh, which really nice and sparkly. But again, you see these pools of light. And there's my buildings just lit up with a single fiber. So let's talk a little bit about how, and in fact, one of the nice things is you can see here, I've just lit this, this little guys up here are digging up the road. And if you don't have a light like this that provides a pool of light, you really don't see these characters because you, you just don't focus on them. So really, this provides a great way to focus. Oh, and there's, of course, a mini miner on the other side of the screen. So we've had a Jag, a mini miner, Rolls Royce. Oh, you'll be surprised at what else I have. Um, one of my uh, colleagues up the road, he, he's in narrow gauge. He just grabbed some of my stuff and went back to his shop and uh, been in two hours. He sent me these pictures. I love the one of the guy looking in the dustbin or the garbage bin, I should say, in this country um, with the light shining on it. I have to introduce you to some of my folks. That's Benjamin, my youngest grandson. He makes all those lamps. So there he is making a, a production of those. Um, and one of the fun parts I did was this is an English um, pub that I hand built um, out of my own mind, but what an English pub typically looks like with a nice little beer garden out the front uh, and so on. Um, and I'll be describing a little bit more of how I actually lit that building. And you can actually see some fibers poked up into the tree there. So that kind of adds to a bit of the glow there. Um, I actually have some under the umbrellas for, for lights as well. But underneath, and you look underneath, you actually see this fiber spaghetti, as somebody's described it. We actually see the, the, the fiber actually glows a little bit. And at first I thought, well, that's a bit of a bummer. Well, it doesn't lose much light, but one of the nice things about it is you can actually decide, you can see exactly where your fibers are going. And you know what it's like with your wires, when, you, when something breaks, tracing through wires is a royal pain in the neck. Well, I have to tell you, I had the other day, I had an experience where I was very lazy and I had all my fibers, you know, lying down, almost, you know, draping on the ground. If you, walked, if you went under my layout, you'd probably strangle yourself. So I decided I better do something about it because somebody was coming down to take a look at my layout. So I had about a hundred lights. It took me two and a half hours to replace every fiber and redo the whole layout of that. Two and a half hours is all it took me. So that's when I said to myself, I am so glad I went to fiber. All right, so I'm gonna just keep moving on. Oh, by the way, this is one of 
One of our customers, Paul McCarty, he's an end scaler. He says his kids actually enjoy looking at the fiber spaghetti more than they do at the trains now. But so the lamp is very bright LED. It's easy to mount. Very few components are needed. And it's very easy to trace the lighting. So basically, when you look at it, it's a two component system. So it's the lamp lighter itself, right? So that's that. And then you've got fiber, which you're going to add. So if you're just lighting buildings, virtually that's all you need and you can get going with it. Um, so if I was lighting houses, so now let's get to some real brass tacks for a moment. We provide different sizes of fiber. The different sizes determine uh, the amount of light you're going to get. It also determines the amount of flexibility in the fiber. So if we start at the top, two millimeter fiber, that's pretty heavy amount of light. The amount of light I get from my box, my lamp light is very intense. So I'd say, okay, so a two millimeter is all you're gonna to need to light an O gauge type of house. I moved to a 1.5 millimeter. And by the way, the light intensity is proportional to the square of the diameter, right? So two squared is four, 1.5 squared is 2.25. So we're just about half the amount of intensity with a 1.5 millimeter. It's more flexible, which is nice. Yes, it's good for O lamps is what we use it for, but also HO houses. If I put a two millimeter into an HO house, it's way too bright. And then I've got to dim it. And I dim it, by the way, by just pulling the fiber slightly out of the lamp lighter. Very simple, not non-electronic electrical way to do it. So any fool can do that. Um, but it's a shame to waste light and especially space within the lamp lighter. So I'd recommend a 1.5 millimeter for an HO house. Go to, um, let's say one millimeter. So now again, we're down to one squared, obviously is one. So that's half the intensity of a 1.5 millimeter. That's really suitable for N, N scale houses. Again, put a 1.5 millimeter in an N scale house, that's way too bright. But all our HO lamps that we sell use a one millimeter fiber. Well, how about a 0.75? So now again, we're about half the intensity. That's useful for N scale lamps, that's what we do. And it's great for putting holes in, in the front of a car, doing the headlights, tail lights, and so on. Um, and I'll show you a couple of those in a moment. 0.5 millimeter, those provide lovely pinpoints of light. So you can use those for putting candles in windows, or you could use it for lighting, putting lights into trees. So that's what I've used for those. So that gives you some sort of a range and any of these fibers can be mixed and matched within a lamp lighter because all the lamp lighter wants to see is just fiber stuck into it. It doesn't matter what size it is. So you can really have quite a variety of fiber for different applications. Hmm. So ultimately I describe it as a three component system. So it's lamp lighter, the fiber, and then if you want lamps, and really it's as simple as that. And that's why you could see I, how I reacted to the Woodland Scenics approach, a beautiful approach, but it just didn't suit my needs because I want to have a lot of flexibility. I want to be able to play with this stuff and to have a lot of fun. So I want to show you a bit of that. So there's my, part of my layout right behind me. In fact, yeah, I don't think you can really see it very well, but... Yeah, so I've got a whole lot of lights down there. And that's my, a picture of it, which is a little bit better for you to see. Um, and it's about six foot. And that's where I've got about 100 different lights in buildings, street lights, you name it. I mean, I, this is my test bed. So that's why I get to be able to play with it. Um, here is a diorama that I use. If, if you've seen me at a show, you're going to see this diorama. So I have these buildings back there. Each building is lit with one. 1.5 millimeter fiber because these are HO size houses. And I have the fiber pointing in slightly different directions. Here it's pointing towards the back of the house. Here I'm pointing it slightly up to the left here. And this one's pointing a little bit more just to the front. front. So you can get some idea. You can vary the lighting very easily by where the direction you point the light. Let's take a look at some other features on here. Well, be creative. So you want to spotlight. You might want to spotlight on the front of a building. Here I've just put on a sign. All I did was take a fiber, drill a hole 45 degrees, stuck the fiber up, and I got a spotlight. Incredibly simple to do and kind of fun. 
Well, how about the car headlights? So there's the car headlights. Um, and in fact, those are one millimeter and they're way too bright for that. They should have been a 0.75, but what the heck, I was learning. How about the tents? See the tents with the campfire? Now those have got 0.75 millimeter fiber sticking up into the tent and a 0.5 millimeter fiber sticking up into the tiny campfire that you see there. And then you can see some other lamps there. The, there's a carriage lamp and a globe lamp. So the point is you can really be quite creative with fibers and spend very little money. So, oh, there we go. So I've got some lights up in my tree as well. Again, very, very simple to do, very quick and very effective. So again, pools of light. So this diorama, you can see there's pools of light there underneath. There's my Rolls Royce, but there's, there's my pools of light shining down from those gooseneck lamps. So that's the product, is the Lamp Lighter One product. Very, very simple. You stick the fibers in one end of it, and the one end actually has a grommet in it, which holds the fibers in place. Minimum numbers is three fibers, but it, you can increase the number of fibers and more. We'll I'll talk about that in a moment. I have to introduce you to David. David's one who makes all my lamp lighters. He's the second grandson. So he, all of the, so you kind of got the, right? This is a family business, slave labor. It's great, um, especially when it's willing slave labor. They get paid for it. It pays for their, their college educations. So there's some idea of some of the lamps we have. There's a carriage lamp, a glo globe lamp. We have highway lamps, but I'm going to run through these because I know buildings are more interesting. We have an HO industrial building lamp. In fact, that's off my little diorama. Just introduced double swan neck lamps for obviously railroad platforms. And we have the N as well down in the swan goosenecks. Now I want to talk a little bit about two varieties of lamp lighter we have. We actually have a lamp lighter two. And it is basically the big brother of the lamp lighter one, double the capacity. And uh, yeah, let's see, yes. So if we look at the capacity of the lamp lighters, I'm going to take a look at these two lamp lighters and we look at 1.5 millimeter and the one millimeter fibers that we talked about before. A lamp lighter one will take about 13 of the 1.5 millimeter fibers. So that means you could light 13 building HO size buildings or 26 N scale buildings with this lamp lighter. So depends upon your scale that you're operating in. So, and again, you can mix and match. So I basically say, yeah, you can get between 13 to 20 buildings lit um, or you know, between 30, 20, 13 and 26 fibers in one box. If we then look at the lamp lighter two, it's double the capacity, so there it is. It takes 26 of the 1.5 millimeter fibers or 52 of the one millimeter fibers. So it just gives you an idea of how, how this sort of is set up. Now, I designed the lamp lighter two for O-gauge scalers. Um, HO guys wanted to use it as well, but blow you down, a whole lot of end scalers bought it. I went, what is going on? So I called someone up and they said, hey, Michael, very simple. I don't need to buy anything else but one of those, and it does my whole layout. I went, oh, got it. So they, you know, it satisfied this their complete need for their layout. So I'm just going to cover a couple of tips. Just this helps uh, to understand something about the fibers. Cutting them, you probably know you really, if you're using fiber optics for data transmission, have they have to be polished ends. You don't polish these, but you do need a clean end. So a utility knife is a great way to cut them or use a pair of shears, as you can see in the second picture, or you could even use a pair of wire strippers, but using the shearing part, never, never use wire cutters. That would give you a pointed end and it'll end up with 50% of the light heading back down the fiber back into the lamp light box. But you can color them. Just take a translucent paint. I use Tamiya, but you can use any of the paints. And all you do is just take, put the brush on the end of the... Um, Fiber, in fact, that always looks to me as though I've just got a match that's just burning, but it isn't. It's a piece of fiber with some light on it, and I'm just coloring the end. And you can paint all sorts of colors. So it's very, very simple to change the colors. In fact, there it is. 
there's a guy trying to get out of the building because his house is on fire. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, one of the other things is, so you can put the fiber up near anything you want because there's no heat. You've got no heat there. The heat is all in the lamp lighter and that's dissipated. But so you can put up red windows if you want, red curtains, if it's a red light. I'm sorry, I'm not sure about that. Well, let's move on to this one. And so, um, but it's also easy to make curtains. Now, one of the things that I did was I always put something over my windows unless I wanted to see inside the house. And in this particular case, you can see that you can see some striations on these windows. It doesn't come out quite as well on the camera, but it looks like curtains. And all I did was I took some um, basically tracing paper and I had a wax crayon and my grandchildren actually just fiddled around with it when they were much younger and I had just had some sitting around. I just put that up on my windows on the inside. Hey, presto, it looks as though I had curtains on my windows. Very, very simple. So that's a freebie. That's got nothing to do with lighting, but it does help you sort of, yeah, improve your housing. Well, one of the fun things, you know, we're coming up on Christmas. So what you can do with a fiber is you can actually nick it. And if you nick the fiber, in fact, I'm just going to show you what I've done with, I've got a lamp lighter sitting here. And I don't know if you can see that very clearly. Let me see if I can move this a bit closer. Don't know if you can see that. Do you see that I've actually got glowing, I've got spots glowing? Not sure if the camera's able to pick that up well enough. Yeah, that's, that may be better. Do you yeah, see how? I see it. Yep. Okay. All right. So yeah, all you, I did... might have, you might have to stop sharing the screen because we're not seeing uh, the camera. Ah, okay. All right. Well, we'll keep going with the, with the screen for the moment. Sorry, we'll get, we'll get to that later then. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, well, what you do is you naturally nick the fiber. So all I've done is I've damaged the fiber in various spots just using a utility knife or a pair of um, shears. And then I just paint, paint it red and green, red and green. Well, that's very simple to do. That, that's going to take me five minutes to be able to create maybe 20, 30 lights. That would take a long time with LEDs, wouldn't it? So, and there it is on that pub. So you can see that what I did was actually put those along my, my English pub. I actually have two strands of the fiber. I have one that's on this side, and I made a V out of it. Down here, it's just brown. That looks like a, um, a gutter with, with a downspout. And then here's another one that just runs along the front of the building with another downspout down here. Altogether, I've got about 60 lights. Took me about half an hour plus to do that. So very, very simple for lighting buildings. And you can see the effects. So I've got different fibers and I'm gonna go into how I mounted the fibers inside here. Um, in a moment. So if you want to change the light intensity of a fiber, all you do is pull it slightly out and it will change the intensity of the light. Very, very simple to do. Now, one of the tricks with fibers too is fibers are actually a bit annoying at first because unlike a wire, you can bend a wire, but if you bend a fiber, it goes straight back and, and takes its original form. And in fact, because it's been round on a reel and we buy it in half mile lengths, it's always curled up, it's a royal pain. So what you can do is you can put the fiber inside, say some tubing. So here it is, aluminum tubing here, aluminum tubing here, and the fiber is running in between here. And all I did here was I just put a pan of boiling water, and you don't need a pan, I can now use it just in a, in a mug of boiling water. You push one end against, I pushed one end against the side here, and maneuvered this one until I got a roughly a right angle bend. Three seconds is all it takes, boiling water, and it got a permanent bend. So it's very, very simple to actually bend or uh, straighten a fiber. And there you can see I've got that bent fiber, and you can see on the right hand side the fibers there quite nicely bent. If you bend it, if you bend it too sharply, you end up with a too much loss of light. And that's what you're seeing down here. There's that glow down there. So you'd then just bend it. And this is too sharp a bend. 
this is a much more gentle bend, as you can see. So bend the fiber fairly easily. And that's important when you're lighting a building, actually, as we'll see. And just some recommendations. Um, people will talk about how what radius you can use for um, data the fibers. But of course, you're looking, you don't want any loss on those. But my recommendation is experiment with it. But if you've got a 1.5 millimeter, about a quarter inch radius will do fine. One millimeter, something like a 532 inch minimum radius. And of course, the light bends around the, fi around the fiber because it's actually bouncing inside the fiber. It's not just coming straight down. It's bouncing up and down with about a 30 degree spread. And it's that that allows it to go around corners in the fiber. So you just cut the fiber too short, no worries. Maybe you have a modular layout. You can connect fibers of different sizes even. So all we do is we actually then take um, some a tubing, aluminum tubing. We cut them to about one inch, two and a half centimeter length. We use an index matching fluid. That just means that it actually has the same optical density as the fiber. And what you do is you just take the, so I'll just walk you through this, take a fiber, insert it through this tube till it comes out the other side, put a very small dollop of the index matching fluid on it, pull it back halfway through, insert the other fiber, and you've got a good optical match. Then you can crimp the ends of that to be able to tighten the fiber in there and keep it as a permanent if that's what you want to do with it. So we actually sell connecting kits for the different sizes of fiber. So I talked about the, the product itself. That's the grommet at the end that holds the fibers. And boy, it took me a long time to find exactly the right grommet. In fact, I found a UK company that sells exactly what I wanted for that. Um, so very easy to insert the fibers, just push them in, and that just opens up more and more as you add more and more fibers into the box. If you're only using a few fibers, this is one of the tricks that I've found many people need to know is, you know, they'll start by just inserting a one or two fibers in the box. And because they curl inside the box a bit, um, it's actually got a tube in it. You actually end up with inefficient pickup of light. So what you can either do is straighten them or you just stick a whole lot of things in it. Stirring straws, other pieces of fiber, it straightens them out. Best thing is, just cram as many fibers as you want into the box as you're lighting your layout, and you've got a nice straight um, fiber in there, picking up maximum amount of light. So here's the key benefits of fiber optic lighting, and we're gonna then get into some details. Realism, you can add lighting in seconds, no wiring. It's a cold light, no heat dissipated near your building. It's a cost-effective solution, but more importantly for me, it allows for creativity, and I believe it's actually is the next generation of lighting mm -hmm. um, through LEDs. So, by the way, am I speaking loud and loud enough? You can hear clearly enough. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So that just reminds me of what I have to do occasionally, um, obviously for track stuff. But boy, you really don't want to go down that road, and especially when you're trying to light buildings. So it's a simple system. It's a one, two, three product, basically mount the lamp lighter, drill a hole safely and carefully, and then add the fiber into the box and up into your layout. So let's look at some building lighting techniques. So here are two fibers, actually two, I've mounted a fiber up here and I've just used very simple stirring straws just so that it hides the light. And if I haven't straightened the fiber, it keeps the fiber very straight. So I can just drill a hole, insert that. And then what I can do is I would then have my lights obviously on the fiber at the top there. So I'm, the reason I wanted to show you that in that way is that's how actually I've used that for my English pub building. So remember, I've talked about that English pub that I've got, but well, it's got lighting inside it. Um, sorry, actually, I wanted to go through. Oh, okay, got it. I'm gonna go back through those in a moment. So what I did was, here's, here's a, another building, and you can see this is my stirring straw, 
with my fiber stack at the top. And what I do is I, if I can, if I'm building this and I've got access to the building, then I'll put, I'll do something like this because I can put it up behind a wall. I don't want to put it near a window because I don't want to see the fiber. I just want to see the effect of the light. And so I'll put this up against a wall and there, there's my light shining there. And I'm going to just take us back through the couple of slides here. Yeah. So you saw there's this window down here. This, there's my little um, bay window. We can sit, sit there and enjoy, have a, have a pint of beer and look out over the river. Um, but looking down into it, so I've got it lit inside and there's my carpet and I've got a table inside and so on. Um, and my iPhone does a very poor job of taking photos and I've got a picture on the wall as well. So as I look inside my pub, I can see all of this stuff and it's very easily lit with the fibers that I used. So my basically, what I did was I've run my fibers up on the inside here in a couple of places using the stirring straw technique. And then the light is just dispersed into the building. And actually I have, I have about four fibers that I've used to light this building. Cause it's a fairly long building. And that's this, there's a, a bloke who's just walking over a dead cat. Um, in my sort of lobster shed. And that's where I was showing you that light along the riverfront. So I wanna show you some of the things that customers have done because customers teach me most of what I know about fiber lighting. You might think I, I should know it. Well, I don't, I, I, I sell the stuff, I work on it a bit, but it's customers who show me lots of stuff. And this was one from Mark Jewett. Many of you probably know Mark Jewett from NMRA. And um, oddly enough, I should have kept the picture where he actually sent me this picture and it didn't have any light in the train station. It just had these lamps out here. So I called Mark up and I said, Mark, what's, what's going on here? And he said, well, he said, the problem is my building is mounted onto the platform already. So I couldn't get access to it. So I just gave him one question. I said, so do you have a drill? Well, Next day, he sends me that picture. And I said, got it. He thought he had to mount something like an LED up inside the building. And he obviously knew that was going to be, you know, it's on a floppy piece of, of um, uh, wires. It's also going to take up some space. He's got to drill a reasonable size hole, et cetera. All he did was just stick a fiber up in it. Done. So you can see it's very, very simple. So building techniques, it's going to be difficult for me to probably give three lessons on building techniques, but actually we will talk about a number of things there. So that's another of his where he actually did some beautiful work on his um, car. There's four headlights coming there. Um, my friend Al Judy down the road, he loves his um, end scale, his um, narrow gauge trains. Those are some of our lamps there. And this is what one. This is Paul McCarthy again. He actually has solid buildings. So what he did was he decided to use something like these um, street lamps that you see there. The this is N scale, but there's this little guy reading his newspaper outside the library. And it makes a very interesting little picture there. I love it really. Um, and again, you can see that there's you know a lot of dark here because we're not lighting the whole area. And this allows you to see features very, very well and very, very clearly. And this is what I call his Thomas Kilcade picture, which he sent to me. He actually grabbed some fiber and, and used as a, um, a backdrop for a moon glow. Um, but, it, but anyway, again, lighting in the buildings, lighting on the street lamps, um, great shot. Here's just some of our industrial building lamps being used on some of the buildings. Um, again, our Judy. I love this station platform. Again, you've got lighting inside the station, but now we've got these goosenecks here. And by using a camera in a certain way, you can really get this sort of wet effect uh, where it looks as though it's one of those November, you know, end of November evenings, it's misty, it's a bit chilly, you know, and you're waiting for the train. Um, here's another, I like this one. This is, um, is used to our, um, Part our highway lamps for actually for parking spaces, for a parking lot. 
but then quite a, you know, fibers up into the buildings. So multi-story buildings, um, nicely lit with a couple of fibers. This is just a, a train depot, again, lit with uh, some of the in, uh, highway lamps. Or you can take an intermodal yard and light it up. Again, I love some of these. This is uh, an end scale, um, a guy called Paul, Paul Bocadero. Um, I love the reflections of the lights in the pond that he's, he's got there. But here's something you can have some fun with. So this is an just this is a building on my layout because you recognize these little guys here digging up the road still. And I've lit this building and you can see the lighting there, but you can also see there's a light coming out from this door. All I did was I took this cover, I put some aluminum foil underneath so as to make it reflective. And I just drilled a small tiny hole, stuck a fiber there and that's it. And so I've got some lighting there. So basically, you don't have to go and buy our industrial building lamps. You can just do something like that very, very simply. There's another one. This is an HO. Again, I just love the way in which that lit the front. Again, he used the um, spotlighting effect and lighting inside the church. This one is going to be, is to me, very interesting. Steve Jurenix. He does beautiful buildings. Uh, he's Canadian. Um, and you see the building behind him. I'm going to show you what he actually did with this building. So that's the end result um, of his building. And you're going to need just a couple of features there. He's got these little door headlight, door lights, which, by the way, he's not using anything of ours. He's just made these little ones with a, a fiber sticking out. He's blocked off some of the windows so that it looks typical of you know broken windows in a building or blocked out windows. But an interesting feature here is this sign. He actually made his own company sign and put it into that building. And I'm going to show you how he did that. But before I do that, let me just show you what went on in the back. So here he has a lamplighter one. And he's run the fiber back here. And where he doesn't want the light, he's actually put it in heat shrink tubing. So here's some fiber here. And then he scraped the fiber in places. So it actually gives out more light than it would normally. So in other words, this is dim here, but now he's got this much brighter light up here. So he used a number of different approaches to sort of get the lighting just right for what he wanted. He's much more of an expert with the fibers than I am, or ever will be probably. But here is what you're gonna see is, here he's got a bunch of fibers and they're going into this little box. Well, this is where he actually made up. Well, sorry, I'll just give one, one more picture. It just gives you a bit of a close up of the lamp lighter one with the, two, the fibers coming out of it and how he just sort of covered them up. So you, it's typical back of your building can look like an awful mess. The ins it's what, what you see from the front that really matters. So here is a close up of that back section. So this is those fibers running into a box. So when he showed me that, I went, Steve, how on earth did you make your sign? So there's his sign that he got, that's his company name. And what you can see, if you look carefully, you can see the fibers running along the back. What he did was he actually scraped the fibers so that they leaked like light out and then glued them to the back, giving it a fluorescent tube look. So here he is mounting it. So there's, there's those fibers coming down into this. There's the fibers sticking out of the building. And basically that's what he, he did in order to get this sign. So again, very, very simple technique. Well, of course, when I saw that I couldn't be outdone. So I immediately went back, back into my room and I made my own little sign up so that I've got Dwarven lighting without wiring. And again, I just took five fibers, scraped them, mounted them, gave them a nice right angle bend so they come down into the building. And there you are. So I think you get some start to get some idea of how you can really use fiber for some interesting techniques. That's my oldest grandson. So 
he's that Austin. He's the one who started with me. And I, I was in Australia and he sent me this picture of a bridge that he was working on. And I said to myself, I didn't ask him to work on that. What's he doing? Well, somebody else had got hold of him, one of my other customers, and said, hey, I'd like you to make a bridge and I'd like you to have it. Trenton makes the world takes. Anybody knows where that is? New Jersey, right? Right on the border. You got it. So, so there it is. So there's the bridge and that's it up front, up close rather. So he made a bridge. What he did was he took some fiber and he put those fibers together, painted them black, and then he used a utility knife or an exacto knife and cut into the fibers so that he actually then could create the Trenton makes the world takes. It was very effective. And I reckon you could easily do that if you just took fibers, painted them, and then used a laser cutter. You know, you could, you could make it look much better. I mean, it looks pretty good, but you could actually make your signs very easily for your layout. So you could have backlit signage. So here's one of another, Steve. He loves um, Disney World. And there's one of his pictures, the picture of his, um, the entrance to Disney World. And one of the things you'll notice is he actually has the fiber here. And again, he just nicked it in places to give it some emphasis. And that's all he's done on this. this. He's got some lights down here, some fibers in here. He's got a whole lot of fibers up in one of those uh, interesting hotels. Um, and you can see that's what it looks like in the, in the daytime. But it's funny, when he sent it to me, though, the flag at the top wasn't lit. And I said, Steve, it's, you can't have a flag up there that's not lit. It's illegal. So <laughs> I've been living in America. So I said, hey, just drill a hole, 45 degrees, put a fiber in. So he sent me that picture the next day and said, yep, got it, Michael, done. So we each bought some, each other a, a trick or two. That's part of my layout where you see my English pub down the end there. There's my sort of lobster house, I have a waterfront, and I have these. These don't come out quite well. I've actually got these slightly orange color, so they've got a very nice warm glow. So sort of, I describe it as like my, my wife and I just want to walk down the waterfront and sort of this romantic waterfront here. The cars have headlights in them um, and so on. So it's very easy to create interesting dioramas. Um, by the way, if you ever want to get your lights to really sparkle, there's a quick, simple trick of photography. All you do is you put your camera on a tripod. So obviously it's not going to be an iPhone. Set it for something like 15 seconds. Take the aperture and wind it all down as far as it goes, like an F22. So it's a very, very na narrow aperture. You know how if, you, if you're looking at a light and you close your eyelids down, you get, you get this sort of diffusion, this sort of star effect of light. That's exactly what happens with the camera in this particular instance. And you get these beautiful star you know, bursts of, of, um, of light. Makes the whole thing look a lot more interesting. So that's a trick. You can ask me later a bit more detail if you want about that. Um, but you'll see my spotlight there on my flag. So, and there's my cars with the Head, uh, the tail lights as well. And of course, oh, there's a Jaguar. That's my O gauge Jaguar um, with its headlights drilled out and actually have a flashing light on the top of it as well. So another customer, he, he actually decided to light up some of his trucks. So uh, his trailers uh, with fibers. And so that's just an example of that. And I love this. This is from um, a guy, Larry Rissa, and actually I saw him last, yeah, last weekend in, at the York show. And you can see the beautiful effect on the right-hand side of the lamps where you get, where, as a train comes in, it's going in and out of the light as it goes in along the platform and into the station. And almost last, but the, here's one that I've been looking for for ages was somebody who had an oil refinery, a small one, and he just used, lit it up, using that nicking technique. So you actually end up with something where the stairs, you know, can be lit uh, very easily. And it just sort of has that sparkle effect to it. 
Now I'm going to do something awful, which is I bought some paper. Well, I bought a CD and it actually had, uh, um, or a DVD rather, it had these flat buildings on it. So I made, I decided I'm going to work on one of these. I've never done anything like this. So that's the cardboard, or actually it's not, it's a piece of heavy paper that I printed up on using my own printer at home here. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to light that up. So I wanted to light those, the different areas up um, selectively. So what I did was actually in this, I took some of that um, foam board and it's very easy to, to damage the foam board and create channels. So I cut holes where I wanted the windows and then I cut channels down here so I could actually put fiber up into here and run them out the bottom. In fact, here's a different piece of it. So you can see here, I've got the hole, I've got a fiber, and I've let the fiber run up to the top. I'm just using some plast um, plasticine to really hold them in place while I glue them. And then I have them coming in and coming out down through here. I have no light, obviously, in this window here or in these windows, so it's sort of selective. I then put on the back of my building, I put foil because everywhere I, I don't want to see light coming through the paper where I don't have a window. Foil is an extremely simple um, thing to use in buildings to cut down light. Um, and so I used that to cover the parts where I didn't want the light and obviously cut little holes, very simple to do. And there's the effect. So very simple, but obviously it's very crude. It's not, it's not a very nice building, so to speak. You know, it sits back there, but it's, it's, um, it was you know, fairly effective. My wife doesn't like it at all, but there we go. Um, she thinks buildings should have much more of a 3D look for them. This building is only about, oh, stands off at about a quarter of an inch from the wall. But it just gives you, I just want to give you some flavor of ideas of things you can fool around with and ways you can do it. Um, in January 2021, um, there was an article on the use of fiber optic lighting on page 56. It's a good article. Paul McCarty put it together, um, just if you want to take a look at more detail uh, that he provided in there. Um, I'm just going to cover one other area. You know, it's fun to have static buildings. It's fun to have street lights, but it's a lot of fun to have things flashing. So we actually have what we call a flashing um, animation unit, um, our FL unit. It'll blink, it'll flash, and it just takes the fibers and it takes triggers and you can use it for railroad crossings. So for example, you can use this. So here's the, there's the FL, here is um, detectors. Here's some railroad crossings with fiber going in and a bell. And that's all, so basically you can really very simply put together a railroad crossing system. So we have these little railroad crossing lights. And again, my boys make those, my little grand, my grandchildren, they're not so little anymore. They're all actually much taller than me. Um, I'm an N, H, O, and O. Um, and so basically we just provide a kit, which has got the bell, got the um, detectors. It has two of the crossings, um, the cross bucks in it, and then the FL unit itself. But one of the things I realized, sorry, I'll go back to this, was it's got, the box has some programming. You have to know which detector is programmed to reach which light output. How is the light output working? Is it just flashing? Is it blinking? Is it just staying on? You know, there's all of these sort of criteria and people get themselves really tied up in knots. So, and it takes me half an hour to undangle the knot usually. <laughs> so with a much simpler idea, which is this thing called a dedicated flasher, DFL, dedicated flasher. You just have these four fibers you can put into it. And at the top of it, all it has is just screw terminals, a plus a ground for the, this is for inserting the detectors. And this has the uh, trigger on it. We also have just some jumper pins that can convert it from being a railroad crossing to a block signal system but most people are using it as a railroad system. So very, very simple to wire in. Again, the circuit, so we actually then put it together as a kit. Very, very similar, but this is actually what's really selling. The other one hardly sells. 
except for people who want to do more fancy things, um, but very, very simple to put together. So I don't know if this will come up. Now that really makes something come alive, doesn't it? It's, it's fun when you do that. My, my grandson who designed up the circuit with me, he came back from college. I mean, I, ran, I said, just run a train. And as it went past the railway crossing, he just went, oh my word, that's done it, dad, granddad. That's wonderful. So it's just, yeah, it just fits in very easily. Same sort of uh, system as the FL unit um, and easy to use. You can also use it with dwarf lamps and tall lamps for um, block signaling. And yeah, so you can put them in. So there they are on my layout. Those are my, actually those were some early ones. They're a little bit too big. We actually have made them smaller than that. So they look a little bit nicer. And most recently I've just put together some turnout machines. So basically, you know how it is when you look down the ladder, you want to see which way things are lit. We now have a store motor one, snap, uh, twin coil and a snap bipolar, so you can use it for Atlas, Cato, and so on. And basically, it's just a turnout machine, as well as the um, dwarf signals or even the tall signals. So that sort of helps people quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, if we're looking at a storm motor, it's very simple. We can take the power from pin one and eight. We can use suitcase connectors, so no wiring done at all, really. I just insert the fibers from three dwarf or tall signals and you're done. So, and the, basically the control unit there, it just, it just goes Velcros onto the side of your tortoise. So that's the idea. Just put it on the side of the tortoise. Here's your quick splice connectors going on to pin one and eight. And that's all we need to do. So four simple, I'm just gonna quickly go through this because I don't think you are very, come on, come on. Okay, all right. So, yep, or you can use tall ones. So that's what the whole kit looks like. It comes with the connectors. There's the little box. There's the dwarf signals. So um, let's jump through that. The Atlas ones are very similar. We just have this little unit here and it plugs in between your switch and your controller there, and then you have your lamps there. Or you can have a Kato one. I call it a Kato two-wire one for, where you've got a permanent, solid, uh, permanent magnet being used. So you just put that in between the control switch. So very simple. Um, and coming soon, I'm hoping to actually put together a yard light. I've been playing with that for a while, and I just don't have the time to sort of complete the whole job. Um, just give you an idea of the cost of these systems. The lamp lighter one starter kit, we sell 93.90 with 30 foot of fiber. The lamp lighter two starter kits, 149.99 with 60 foot of fiber. And lamp lighter 2S is 169.99 comes. 2S, what's that? This S is the super bright, 70% brighter than the lamp lighter two. That's just if you're in a, an environment where you're gonna have, you know, like could be a museum or something, you're gonna have a lot of light and you just need to have something a little bit brighter um, than you would on your regular layout. And then the lamp sets, they come typically around 24.90 and so on. So I won't spend much time on that. The fibers, they come between 3.59 to 11.99 for a roll of 30 foot. Um, and by the way, so all of these right now are on sale at 20% off till the end of this month. So that's, um, and doesn't need any code, it's just, automatic 20% off. The flasher starter kit, that's 165.99, but this is sort of an a la carte system. And then you've got to buy the crossings and detectors um, and so on separately. If on the other hand, you go for this, this is the HO kit, it's 129.95, gets you the two crossing, two detectors and the crossing bell. If you're adding the power supply for it, it's 139.99. So. Gives you some idea. You can visit our YouTube site, Model Train Scenic Lighting, join our Fiber Guild for model railroaders, and a lot of people do that. 
um, where we just share ideas. And that's where I get a lot of input from different people. Um, we also have a Facebook page, but I don't seem to spend any time on there. I just, Facebook just confuses the heck out of me. Um, so there is a, you know, for you guys, I know there's um, so this special discount. I wanted to cover this briefly with you. That is 20% off for every product on our whole system until the end of this month, no code needed. But if you're going to do this now for new tracks, it's going to be, that will be 20% off, but you'll need to use that code after October 31st. So after October 31st, you use that code until November 23rd. We'll give you 20% off the lamp lighter starter kits, the ones that are designed for lighting buildings. So limited. So if you want unlimited access to everything, 20% off, it's now till the 31st. A new tracks code will be used for just the lamp lighter starter kits. And I do want to just, uh, there's another shot of my layout of the lighting. That was a couple, that was two years ago when we actually had to mask ourselves in order to be able to enjoy each other. That's my team of people who make all our products. My wife is at the front, my daughter as well. My son-in-law is right at the back there. He does all my finance, but these are the guys who actually make product for us. So there we go. So it's a, it's a great team. Now I'm gonna take us back off here and go back to regular screen. How do I do that? Stop share, right? Yep. There you are. Am I? I can, I'm only seeing myself. Okay. Um, <laughs> you just bottled it. Yeah, let me get out of that. Oh yeah, good. I'm gonna get out of that completely. All right, good, good, good. So I was gonna show you some tricks though that you can use so here's, here's my lamp, a lamp light that I've got. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, good. So this is where I was trying to show you that this is what you do when you nick the fiber. Does it show? You can see that I've actually got nicks along it. That's those glows. Yeah. Do you just need a little nick, just a small nick? Look, just a very small nick. You, in fact, the amount of nick you do is determines the amount of light you get out. Okay. Two, and you break it off, but um, but and you only need to do one side if you're only looking at one side of it. So very very simple. Here's here's a tiny fiber. So this one is absolutely tiny. This is one of those. It's almost well, it's two hairs widths. And th this one is what I use for up trees and um, into windows for candles. Um, you can paint them as I think I showed you. This one, let's see, come on, Michael. Yes, don't know if you can see that. So this one, again, right? that's my Christmas tree or my building light, red, red, green, red, green. But I want to show you a trick that a customer gave me the other day. So I put this down. I have to hold it. I hold it under my arm. Here we go. Oh, it's a nice arm warmer. That's nice. Um, so a customer came and he said, look, Michael he said, why don't you just take a bead and put it on the end of the fiber? And you can see this bead is glowing very nicely around here. Yeah. So I went down to Joanne Fabrics and I said, can I ask for some beads, please? And they told me some. And I said, no, it's not for me, it's for my train layout. Of course, they looked at me even more strangely at that point. But I just took the, I took the beads and I just cut them off the string, right? And all I've done is I just stuck the bead on the end. Now you can see that light there glowing a bit, but obviously if I was shining at you, I mean, that's the intensity of the light that normally you're getting from it. But if I now put that onto the bead, he says, without dropping it, fortunately the fiber fits perfectly up the bead. I get this really great effect. So yeah. I, hmm? I do too, I think that's great. So I could put that inside a building for example, if I just wanted to illuminate a room and I didn't want to have you know, anything lit into a particular area, I could actually then light that using a, a bead. And it, obviously I'm going to have access to it as well. So it's not so useful if I'm just sticking a fiber up into a building that's already glued down. So, yep. So, so my customers are constantly teaching me new things that you can do with, with it. So I'm going to stop at that point from, oh, there's only one other thing I want to show you. And in fact, I've just got to go and 
get the building to show you this. So I'm sorry, I didn't have it with me. I'll be right with you. That's quite the system. So I was up visiting somebody in Wisconsin, actually, who's bought a lot of our products. So he knows a lot about fibers. But he had a, build, a, a church building a little bit bigger than this. And he had four LEDs in it. And he says, I just can't seem to light it. I can't get enough light through. Well, I looked at it and I said, well, the reason is, of course, you've got paper over the windows and it's thick paper. So I'm going to show you something that you can do with this. I hope you can get it. Do you see those, those windows lighting up? Yeah. Yeah. Fiber is, is much, much better. In fact, I showed him and he went, oh, my gosh. He said, oh, what a fool. I've got all this fiber sitting around. All I need to do is just drill a hole up under that thing and, and put it at an angle to the windows, and, I've, and they're lit. But with the LED, the LED is just diffusing the light everywhere, whereas here with this, I'm actually targeting that window. And it gives it so it's kind of fun, huh? You learn new things. One question so, I have, Mike. Yeah. Uh, let's say you wanted to light an individual building, right. like that building, this building, that building, at, at different times. How would I go about doing that without having to buy each one a special Darwin one or two to light it? It's a great question. Um, I would say that's probably a... Um, you sort of got me trapped on that one. Well, uh, I, I just wondered. I, I mean, it, would, it looks great. I love it. No, it's actually, it is one of the, it's a great question because what you're doing, obviously, you just need huge amounts of light to illuminate something. I should have said that. The part of the problem is here with many people, you know, animation is, is very, you don't need, you can use a 15 milliamp LED, but to light something like this, like a building, you need much, much more light and so on especially through these fibers. Um, what I ha people have asked me to do, and I haven't got around to doing it yet, is take a series of the lamplighter ones and cascade them together and use a, a, basically an Arduino to turn those on and off. Mm -hmm. So you could actually buy buildings with different wind, you know, coming on right. and off. Yeah. Right. So that is something that I'd, I would like to do. Um, and in fact, if I put a kit together like that, obviously the price of the... Um, Lamp lighter ones comes, you know, down considerably because now I can, you know, put a whole kit together. Yeah, that's great a great question. question. Another question I like is that the underneath of your layout, you're always trying to think of a way to light it up. This way, it's lit up for you when you get underneath. <laughs> that's a great idea. By hook or by crook, it sure is. In fact, <laughs> let me do this. We're going to. I'm just going to take you under my layout. Not many people get to do this. But sometimes you have to get underneath there. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there it is. That's, that's great. That's how I can see every fiber, where it goes. I know I can see immediately what's gone wrong with it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that just, I mean, it is, it is a spaghetti. There's no doubt about it. Half of the, but it's half the amount of wires you'd have. Um, oh, now he has to get up. Or the old knees. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> no problem. I chose to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it does. It does light up. Um, obviously, if you're if you've got a double level, you don't want that effect. So that's where you would just use the heat shrink tubing to cover it. it yeah, I understand yeah. that. For some reason the fiber just goes through it so easily it never seems to get you know jammed up and sticking. So Michael, I'm really looking forward to the individual segments of the shows that you're going to do to, to, you know, to try to show us exactly, you know, one step at a time, how to do something with, with our windows and buildings and that kind of thing. I, I think your system is, is fantastic because I've never seen anything like it before. And I can't thank you enough for wanting to do this. Thank you very, very much for taking the time with me. It's really kind of you. And um, I look forward. So I think the deal is what that um, people will need to buy, obviously, a starter kit. Yep. And, and uh, then what you're going to do is take that starter kit and uh, take a building and be creative with that starter kit uh, in any way that you can with, within that building or around that building or however you think that the lighting could be beneficially used for a building. 
Uh, yep. And people then can use their own building and see how you do it and hopefully do the same thing, same kind of things to their buildings. Great stuff. Good. Well, thanks for letting me take up a huge amount of your time today. I'm going to go and have dinner now. Okay. Thanks so much, Michael. I really appreciate this. You're welcome, Jeff. Thanks so much. Thanks. Michael runs off. Can I get another question in? Sure. Uh, um, what kind of distance can you run the fiber? I've got a 14 foot long layout. I put the unit in the middle. Can it, can, yeah. will it run seven feet without a significant uh, brightness drop? Yes, it will. Um, it will run. And it, I'm sorry, I didn't cover that. I mean, it's the first question almost out of the box at every show I go to. Um, yeah, the interesting, getting light into a fiber is the very difficult part, which is what I deal with. Once the light's in the fiber, it stays in there. So I did actual measurements, quantitative measurements, and I saw a drop off of about 5% by the time I got to 12 feet, but you can't see 5%. So I would say no drop off at 12 foot. So you're right. So if you put it in the middle, you're running seven foot either side, you should zip it, you won't see any difference. Great, one more question. Uh, am I right in understanding that the lamp lighter no longer has a fan in it, so you don't have the issue with the sound of the fan? <laughs> oh, I, you're right. Excellent, you caught that. Yeah, no fan. In fact, that was part of the challenge that I worked through was how do I get the heat out of this thing without a fan? I didn't want anything mechanical in it whatsoever. Purely electronic and optic, and that's it. What's yeah. the average lifespan of the light in the, in the Darwin lighting? Well, the spec is 22,000 hours, which is okay, but it's, it means we probably won't see the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. At that time. <laughs> uh, that, that, I'm, I'm, that sounds a bit cheeky. The reason LED lights go, especially your overhead ones, is they haven't got enough heat sink. All LEDs are made, all the LEDs that are made have cracks in them, unfortunately. As they get hot, those cracks increase, which increases the resistance, which increases the temperature, which increases, the, you know, in other words, it's a, it's a positive feedback problem. That's why those LEDs, the cheap ones, go out so quickly. If you buy some that are really heavy, you, can, you know, you can buy some that are really heavy. Those have good heat sinks in them. They're going to last and last. This thing has a great heat sink in it. Temperature-wise, it's running at about 110 degrees. Fahrenheit. So it's a nice hand warmer, but that is not going to, that's not going to damage an LED at all. So great, great question on that side. Thank you. Well, to put it another way, after four, well, since April, 2018, when we launched the product, we've had no failures. Good. I remember the very early ones, there was a lot of work getting them put in. I got a couple. You had to oh, polish yeah. the ends and you had the, and then you had a very small tube with a very small light at the end and weren't get, getting it bright enough. So I, I gave up on that one. Oh, you did. Okay. So you, you could have come and taught me a lot. No, 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 no. <laughs> You've done quite well. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Michael, thank, thanks again for being here. We really do appreciate it. And, and looking forward to the, uh, the build along, because I really think that a lot of people are going to enjoy doing that with you and, and frankly, uh, learning from you. Great. Super, Jim. I'll learn from them too, probably. Cheers uh, for now. <laughs>